Welcome to the Exoskeleton Report. This is the news that's going on for January 1st to the 15th. First up, Superflex has released new images of their suit. The, the new suit is going to be called Aura. As a reminder, Superflex used to be part of SRI, and they were developing a soft exoskeleton for the military uh, one time by themselves, and then on the second occasion with a collaboration with Exobionics. The original Superflex project had four components to it. It was designed to be a soft wearable exoskeleton that can be either worn underneath regular clothing or in conjunction with regular clothing and standard equipment. This is a common problem to exoskeleton devices that perform well but interfere with gear, especially when it comes to standard gear for the military or for work and industry. For example, if you have a worker that's working on a construction project, chances are is that they have mandatory safety harnesses and belts that they have to wear at all times. If the exoskeleton is not compatible with that, then it instantaneously becomes useless to the consumer. The second aspect of the Superflex project was a specifically engineered harness by SRI. It worked very similar to a Chinese finger trap where any pull or stress would not be applied just to one point in the body, but 360 degrees around. So if you pulled on one section of the body, let's say the leg, you would feel, the user would feel compression uh, everywhere around that strap. Another part of the Superflex project was a special uh, malleable rope uh, linear actuator. It's uh, a motor that would twist the rope similar to a Roman catapult, creating a linear motion. We can see now in the pictures of the Aura exoskeleton that that mechanism has been completely dropped from the design. The fourth component of the original Superflex project was that the suit would always be useful even if it's without power. Uh, this is in stark contrast to heavier metal frame exoskeletons where if the motor sees up or you lose power, the exoskeleton will become a hindrance. From the pictures that have been released of the or we can see that that uh, design mentality has persisted. The suit can be worn under clothing and it clearly will not interfere with movement if it's powered or not. However, there is no trace of the flexible rope motor, and instead it's been replaced with what appears to be a um, muscle wire. Muscle wires were really popular in the 2000s. You apply electricity to them, and over time they will shorten. Now, normally they cannot be used for an able body exoskeleton, because it takes a long time for the muscle wires to activate. However, the application that is being listed for the order makes sense. If you have an elderly person that needs to stand up from a chair, they really don't care how quickly they execute the motion. All they want is for some assistive force to be applied eventually. It could be one second, it could be 10 seconds before that force is applied. This appears to be the design principle behind the order, where it is targeting the consumer and it's not trying to be multiple things at the same time. This month was also the CES 2017 in Las Vegas, one of the biggest technological shows for the year. As far as we know, there were not one, not two, but three different exoskeletons featured. The first one was the Atlas by Japan. That is a wearable harness exoskeleton with four motors around the waist. It is a particularly interesting device that goes after lower back pain. Rather than trying to diminish the nervous signal for the pain, it goes directly after the pain itself. The four motors try to decompress the spine, reducing the pressure and therefore reducing the pain. We expect that we're going to see a lot more from the Atlas Japan in the future. The two other exoskeletons were by Hyundai. Hyundai believes that there is common ground between car manufacturing and exoskeleton development. We at the Exoskeleton Report believe that that is exactly the case. Currently, motor transport vehicles require infrastructure. 
you need to cover roads, rails or airport control towers. Exoskeletons provide the solution to that. Uh, theoretically, once exoskeleton technology gets there, we can use them as transportation devices that can be used on anything, staircases, dirt roads, furniture. Therefore, Hyundai is not really off from their assessment, but it will take some time to get there. In the past, Hyundai have uh, constructed prototypes that have seemed less than practical, but it seems that their two new devices are deviating from that trend. The first one that they have is the HWEX, which is a lower back support exoskeleton. It is similar to many of the other devices currently making it to market. It reduces the strain on the back and it supports the hips during a lift. The second device is a refined medical gait rehabilitation exoskeleton, the HMEX. We really don't know too much about it, but it is a big step forward compared to their earlier prototype from 2015. Exoskeletons do not have to be just for people. They can also be for Lego minifigures. Some time ago we made a Lego minifigure exoskeleton based on the Exobionics ExoGT. We were hoping that that would generate interest amongst younger people and maybe the Lego group itself and further proliferate the advancement and spread of exoskeleton technology. But we were really happy to discover this week that uh, Go X Studio has a new LEGO minifigure equipped with a LEGO exoskeleton. LEGO Look is going to be helping test out the new LEGO minifigure exoskeleton for work and industry. Now we have two LEGO minifigure exoskeletons and it's only a matter of time before the LEGO company notices. Baker Ballistics has announced the first man-carryable ballistic shield. It is a large ballistic shield that can withstand bullets that is not being carried by hand but has its own vest that transfers the weight over the shoulder of the user. This is not at all dissimilar to the earlier over-the-shoulder camera support vests. It is only a small step from here that a full exoskeleton could be built that takes the weight that's already properly distributed over the shoulder and drives it directly into the ground. This demonstrates the possibilities for military and police exoskeletons to be used in the future. As it stands, armed conflicts are like the Wild West. The, the one that shoots first is the one that wins, because there isn't the capability to carry large ballistic shields around. Exoskeleton technology can potentially change that. Edu Exo is the first educational exoskeleton package ever developed. It is an elbow exoskeleton designed to teach people programming and how to get the signal from the exoskeleton into a virtual reality or a computer game. This is really exciting because until now there really hasn't been an exoskeleton developer's kit. Even we at the exoskeleton report who have made our own exoskeleton have no idea how to get the input from the position and encoders into a virtual reality system. The exoskeleton development kit is still in development, but even we are very likely to get a copy. To find out more, visit eduexo.com, where we'll try to bring you more news and information on this project as it becomes available to us. Hypersuit VR. The Hypersuit VR is a bench with two end effector exoskeletons for the arm. It is a virtual reality system meant to imitate a glider that is being controlled by an exoskeleton. The user lies down on the bench and then grabs the controller in each hand that is linked to an end effector exoskeleton. The exoskeletons are heavy and it requires quite a bit of muscle power to operate the virtual glider. This is in our opinion, just the beginning of the merger of virtual reality for gaming with exoskeleton technology. At SES 2017, there were multiple haptic feedback devices designed to provide muscle stimulation or skin stimulation to imitate 
uh, resistance of objects on the ground. The people developing these products have no previous exoskeleton experience. But in 2017, we foresee that there will be a merger between the virtual reality field and exoskeleton technology, or at the very least, an intersection point. Exoskeleton Report, business news for January 1st to the 15th. It was recently announced that Exobionics has taken a $10 million loan. While a company taking a loan is usually a sign that they are running out of money, investors have been incredibly happy by that move. Until now, Exobionics has released more shares in order to keep up with expenses. Many investors see this new uh, fundraising move as a clear indication that Exobionics management is confident that they can repay the loan and that the company will turn profitable within the year. In other business news, Rewalker Robotics has announced a realignment of their strategy. The company will continue to work on their flagship product, the Rewalk 6.0, and they will also continue working on their collaboration with the WIS Institute in creating a commercial soft exoskeleton for stroke rehabilitation. However, Rewalk Robotics is planning to have layoffs. They are foreseeing eliminating 10% of their workforce. Normally, layoffs mean panic for a company. But in reality, 10% is really not all that much. It gives Rewalker Robotics the opportunity to realign their human assets. Congratulations to Sean Peterson, the CEO of Strongarm Technologies. Recently, he was featured in Forbes' list of 30 under 30. Strongarm Technologies is the maker of the FLX and V22 back support exoskeleton. Under Sean's leadership, Strongarm Technologies has evolved from a small, virtually unknown company into the leader in back support exoskeletons. It is estimated that in 2017, there will be as many as 50,000 back support exoskeletons made by the company. We just found out that Strongarm Technologies will be sponsoring some of the prizes for the Innovation Challenge in the Wearable Robotics 2017 conference. Not only will the company be providing sponsorship, but their CEO will personally be judging every single submission and finalist. The Innovation Challenge will be an incredible opportunity for people in the industry, hobbyists or researchers to have their work and projects reviewed by some of the most influential people in the industry. Thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, please feel free to comment below, hit the subscribe button, like us, and also follow us at the exoskeletonreport.com for more stories just like these. Thank you!